Hello and welcome to a brief fully charged news update. Now there is so much, uh, so many new cars coming out, so much incredible developments in the world of renewable energy, energy storage, massive batteries being installed all over the world. Globally, there's an enormous shift going on. We could literally produce a news update every hour and we'd still be behind the times. There's an incredible amount going on, but I'm gonna try and catch up with a few news snippets now and a few announcements in this very brief episode. I'm trying to keep it brief. It never is, it always goes on longer than I think. Shut up, Robert, and get on with it. Okay, so yesterday, after a very long production meeting, this was a classic example, long production meeting. How are we gonna shoot this? When are we gonna to go to the launch of that? This is coming out soon, da 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 da. Big long list of, of uh, car, particularly in this case, cars that we wanted to sort out. We thought we'd got there. We all leave, go down. The first email I see after this meeting is from yet another car company that is launching yet another completely new electric car. None of us had heard about it. Johnny hears about all this stuff all the time. Even he hadn't heard about this. So there's yet another new car. Can't talk about it yet. We're gonna go and see it very soon and we'll be releasing a video of it soon. But here's the simple fact, is in the next really six to to nine months, there are so many new electric cars coming out and they're not all big, heavy, two-ton SUVs. In fact, most of them are smaller, cheaper, lighter cars, which is really, really what the market needs. Lots and lots of mass-produced, cheaper, smaller, lighter electric cars. That's what we're looking at in the very near future. It's a very exciting time. But something that I often forget to mention is how a lot of these cars, and particularly, it has to be said, the Tesla, are improving, even after they're made, they improve. So, as many of you uh, viewers will know, I have been driving a Tesla Model S for the last four years. It, in fact, the, the lease is about to run out, and uh, I am like this, in a non-religious way, uh, hoping that the Tesla Model 3 right-hand drive will be delivered to the UK in time for me to, <laughs> Uh, to take my lovely Tesla Model S, which I do love because uh, the lease is running out, that's going, and I'm replacing it with a Tesla Model 3. I feel it's my responsibility, it's my duty to do that. Um, one of the little things I noticed today, I, it's weird, I've never noticed that before, I was seeing some uh, updates that were, Tesla was posting on Twitter, on the official Tesla account. They have 3,700,000 or something followers. They only follow 77 people and one of them is me. And I didn't know. And now I'm worried about all the things I've said <laughs> about Tesla. It's mainly been positive, but I'm not a kind of obsessive Tesla fanboy. I always want to balance it with what else is going on in the world. And the picture on my Twitter profile is me standing by a Jaguar I-Pace. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on from that. Recently, I was driving the Mercedes EQC. Yes, it's a great big heavy SUV, 100% electric. Uh, it was much, much better than I expected, but I don't want to give away, the, I do a bit of a rant in it about these cars, about the fact that all these big manufacturers are producing big, heavy SUVs. It wasn't so much about the car, it was about the people who buy big, heavy SUVs. And I don't want to spoil that because I want to save that. I haven't edited it yet because I'm going to have to do quite a lot of judicious editing because I've got a little bit ranty. And this is going to be, <laughs> I'm attempting to have a rant-free episode. <laughs> so one of the key features that I noticed in this Mercedes was that it had this special system that, say, you're going on a long journey. So you're going to drive from A to B, but at A plus one, there's a rapid charger on your route. The battery, the battery management system preheats the batteries before you get to that charger. Not for the whole journey, just for the period of time it needs to preheat them before the journey. So probably the last five, 10 kilometers, five miles, I have no idea. But for a short period of time, it will heat the batteries so that when you charge it, the batteries are, are at the optimum temperature to rapid charge at the fastest possible rate. It can reduce charge times by 25% if the battery is at the right temperature when you plug the car in. Brilliant, I thought. No one else does that. No one. I've never heard of that before. Such a simple, good idea. Using all the computer software in the car to manage the batteries to that extent. Brilliant, Mercedes. Massive hats off to you. Then I got back to my Tesla Model S and it's had a software update. Tesla does that all the time. It's constantly updating, constantly improving, not only the driving experience, including it's improving the range of the car, it improves the sat-nav. There was one, okay, there was one update a couple of years ago where the sat-nav went just <laughs> pathetically terrible. Uh, but they, they corrected it. So it's like, have, it's like on your phone when you get software updates on your phone. The car does that. One of the software updates 
that was in this latest edition was preconditioning the battery on a long journey before you supercharge the car. Exactly the same system. Now, did Tesla come up with that before Mercedes did? Did Tesla hear that this is what Mercedes has done and thought, that's a very good idea, that can work, we can write, write that in? I have no idea. But I was very intrigued to see how quickly, literally it was two days later, I saw the Mercedes on the Thursday and on the Saturday I sat in my Tesla and there, was, there it was, you know, amazing, amazing. So I haven't used it yet in the Tesla. I'm probably not going to get the chance because, and here's a very important point for people who don't drive electric cars, you use the public charging network much less frequently than you might imagine. I don't use the superchargers that often because I don't need to because the car's charging the other side of that wall. It charges here off the solar panels that are on the roof. I'm not going to talk about that because I'm trying to do this quickly. Now, Tesla Model 3s. The one thing I can confirm now is there will be Tesla Model 3s on display at Fully Charged Live this year, Fully Charged Live 2019, 7th, 8th and 9th of June, very soon, three weeks from the day I'm saying this, uh, at Silverstone. Um, so there will be Tesla Model 3s there. It's just, we knew they would be, but we didn't want to say until it was totally confirmed. There's also loads of other cars, but I'm going to go into detail about that in a moment, because one of the things we won't have this year at Fully Charged Live is electric aircraft. Not this year, but next year? Maybe. Now, there's no shortage of uh, aircraft companies around the world developing electric aircraft. I mean, we've featured some things on Fully Charged in the past, and we've also half recorded a show about the amazing Rolls-Royce uh, Electroflight uh, Red Bull aerobatic plane that's being developed just down the road in Bristol and in Gloucester, and we are going to finish doing that. We've got some amazing footage already, but we want to wait till it's a completed aircraft before we, we, we put it out. So there is a lot of stuff going on even in this country. Rolls-Royce are doing it. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's proper. But there's a Canadian airline and a Seattle engine maker who are currently developing, well, they're busy converting existing sailplanes. Now, those are planes that go on water. Well, I've been on one in Sydney. They're amazing. They don't have wheels. They go... It's a very gentle landing. Anyway, they are swapping out the engines and the kerosene fuel tanks for, uh, uh, and they're swapping it for a, now the company is called Magni X electric motor and lithium ion battery packs uh, on six passenger uh, Harbour de Havilland DHC2 Beaver aircraft. And those are those planes, those single wing, big propeller at the front, big floaty things underneath. So all that noise, that's now going to be, you won't really hear it. Interestingly, not heavier than the original plane. A fully fueled beaver weighs the same as the electric beaver. There you go. Now they begin test flights with these planes in November this year and the propulsion, propulsion system will have a range, this is an experimental one, of 100 miles. Now you might think, oh my God, that's terrifying. You know, I think you would get genuine range anxiety flying over mountains and water in an aeroplane looking at your battery levels. But the whole idea is most of the flights these planes do are well under 100 miles, like 50 miles maximum. So they've got a massive battery buffer for safety reasons. That's why they're doing it like that. They don't fly a long way. They, they fly around Seattle and Vancouver. That's the idea. And if you've not been there, two beautiful cities, really very, very... Seattle, one of my favourite cities in the United States. It's basically on a load of islands and tributaries on the uh, Pacific coast. And there's a lot of flying because you can fly sort of from one island to the next really quickly. And there's a lot of these planes there and there's, they don't need runways. They just land on the sea and then they go doo -doo 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 up to the jetty and you get out with your shopping and then the plane flies away. It's like a taxi. And that's what it was like in Sydney. When we lived in Sydney, one came to get us from Pitwater in North Sydney and flew us to Sydney Harbour. And in about a quarter of the time it took to go in a car and for less money. Worldwide, there are over 100 uh, electric aircraft development programs going on around the world. Five years time, 2024, if you want to, you'll be able to fly somewhere, short haul, we're talking short haul and smallish passenger planes, probably 20, 25 seats, that kind of thing. You will be able to have a go in that. And we're talking the distances London to Paris, uh, Paris to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Copenhagen, those kind of trips. And I've got obviously city trips in the United States. Those sort of trips will be absolutely viable in electric aircraft. As I may have mentioned, uh, as I saw an amazing uh, presentation about this at the Nordic EV Summit in Norway recently, uh, Norway plans to only have, only have electric aircraft for all its internal short haul flights. Because Norway is a very long, thin country, it goes up the uh, North Sea coast and there's lots of fjords. Flying is by far the quickest way of doing it. And of course, they're so uh, opposed to fossil fuels. Quick a side note. If you have Netflix and you look for a, a series, a Norwegian series called Occupied, 
It's very interesting. Occupied on Netflix. I won't say anything about it, but it's very fossil fuel and renewable energy related. It's a drama series with loads of Norwegian people and they're all gorgeous and all the men wear lovely suits and they're beautiful and handsome and all the women are stunning. And even the children are marvellous. Everyone in it is gorgeous. The Russians, less so. The EU, ooh. <laughs> Anyway. Occupied on Netflix is good. As always, it's all down to batteries. So there's this guy, Roe Ganzarski, who is Magni X's CEO. That's the people who are developing the motors for the planes that go and land on water. Uh, he's a former Boeing executive and he seems very bullish about this. He said this is a quote that he gave to Bloomberg, hence where I got this story from. He says, by 2025, a thousand miles in an electric plane is going to be easily done. I'm not saying 5,000 miles, but 1,000 miles is easy. A thousand miles an electric plane is game-changing, world-changing, reducing everything, CO2. What could you put? Let's think. Let's guess now. You've got a great big airfield, loads of open space. What could you put on that open space? So, indeed, we might need to be holding future, uh, future fully charged live uh, events at an airfield. Who knows? That could happen sooner than we think. But for everything at the moment, everything ground-based in the world of electric transportation, there is nowhere you can go where you will see more spectacular. We've, we've gathered stuff from around the world and crunched it all together in one amazing exhibition of clean technology and the future of energy and transport. Everything you can imagine, buses, bikes, vans, delivery vans, hundreds of cars, every single possible co commercially available car in the UK is gonna be on display and hundreds of amazing uh, uh, conversions of classic cars. And if you're the least bit interested in maybe getting an electric car at some point in the future, last year, the vast majority of people who came to it don't own an electric car. You don't have to have one to come along. Quick side point on that, just for the people who do come in electric cars, there is no charging on site at Silverstone. We've begged them to put it in. We've done everything we can to try and arrange it. It's not possible this year. We've got plans for next year where we will have a lot of charging. So I just want to say Milton Keynes is very close by to Silverstone and there's more public charging available in Milton Keynes than in any other city in the UK. There are multiple rapid charges in Milton Keynes. So before you come, we advise that you charge en route to the venue because you cannot charge there. There's just a car park. And it's not just cars or bikes, or vans, or buses. There's also an enormous display of renewable energy systems for the home, battery storage, heat pumps, solar panels, amazing water heaters, car chargers for the wall, all that stuff. There's loads of talks, uh, amazing, amazing people coming along with panels and, and presentations. There's amazing food, there's music, there's test drives. Uh, but when you arrive at Silverstone, you'll be transported from the car park to the venue in one of 200 electric vehicles. That is beyond my possible fantasy dream world. I mean, that is amazing. There'll be queues of electric vehicles of all types ready to take you to the venue. A constant stream of them going round and round. Um, when you get there, each day there will be a, a prize draw. Uh, this is amazing. And you, get, uh, you'll, you'll, you can enter into this prize draw and you can win a thousand pounds. Each day there'll be a thousand pounds. Last year, two people walked away with a thousand quid, which is amazing. But here's another one. There's another competition which is uh, sponsored by Drive Electric, one of our main sponsors, who are giving away a free, free for a year, Hyundai Kona, the much sought after Hyundai Kona. They've got one, you'll see it there, and you can win that car free for a year. Isn't that amazing? There's more than a hundred different, different, hundred different electric vehicles on display, including, as I said earlier, the Tesla Model 3. Uh, now, there are a limited number of test drives, and uh, th those are available on the Stowe circuit, uh, and I say limited, there's going to be many hundreds of them, but in order to like, let everyone who's coming have a test drive, there would have to be tens of thousands. So we can't quite do that. We could never supply enough. But test drives can only be booked on site unless you're a Patreon supporter. And there will be an update about that very soon. And all ticket holders will receive an email explaining all the protocols for uh, being able to drive. You've got to fill in the thing on the DVLA, you know, with your license and to prove you've got a clean license, you got to have your license with you, blah, blah, blah. The Solar Edge live music stage. Now there's live bands playing at Fully Charged Live all day. I don't know, this is all, this is all happening behind my back. We did, as you know, try to get 
Faraday passed to play, but they've split up yet again in a field in Somerset somewhere. But on the Saturday night, a very good friend of mine, Mr. Craig Funk and Soul Charge, will be spinning his glorious Platters of Funk. He does do a brilliant show. If you've never seen him, it is absolutely amazing. It's bonkers and brilliant music. He, he knows his funk. There'll be 30 live sessions each day in the Giga Theatre, which is sponsored by Nissan. Uh, there's too many brilliant talks and panels to, for me to list here. But then, that's, that's amazing, and those were really popular last year, and they're in dedicated theatre spaces, not in the rest of it, so it's quiet so you can hear what people are saying. Really important thing. This really is a show whose time has come. I think, uh, never before, I think, never before has there been uh, this much interest in things like local area air quality, uh, climate change, uh, the impact that the technology we use is having on the environment, the, the, the slightly corrosive effect the oil industry has on our politics. Just mild, round the edges. You can barely notice that they have any impact with the billions they spend on lobbying every year, but I'm not going to have a rant. Uh, that's all. I'm going to shut up now. But just before I go, I want to thank a few of the really special Patreon supporters that we've got that, uh, that t donate $10 a month or more to keep this show on the road. And boy, is that brilliant. I mean, we are so grateful. So a big thanks to Bruce Nicole, Jeremy Cook, Cookie UK, Matthew Moyle Croft, Martin Curry, Kenneth Radley Davis, Per Cedarberg, Peter Corrigan, Stephen Brook, James Gassor, and Stephen McDonald. Thank you so much for your support of Patreon. Uh, of Patreon, well, you are supporting Patreon, but more you're supporting us, which is really important. Um, I don't, I'm not even going to say subscribe or anything like that. There's a new web page coming very soon, that's what I do know. Uh, and there's a lot of brilliant episodes coming. Johnny has been doing some, I've just been editing Johnny. Oh, you're going to love it. There's some really good stuff coming. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching.